Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Hitscan. We are looking likely to get the new hero this week and we have some pretty major hints on who it could be. It's looking likely it's going to be Echo, but it could be a multitude of things based off what the Overwatch Twitter has just posted. We'll talk a little bit about that and also why we're thinking it's coming this week and a few other bits and pieces of news that we missed seeing as we haven't talked about Overwatch at all this week. Speaking of which, I did want to talk about that towards the end of this video. We put out a community post talking about that very thing, Overwatch content on this channel so do check that out and also quick shout out to HyperX they've been super supportive of us in a lifespan they've enabled us to go full-time covering YouTube so in periods like this where there's a lot of stuff going on I did definitely want to shout them out and the cloud mix headset which we'll talk about at the end of this video Accessing fragment recovered personal log of Dr. Mina Liao, file status complete. Of course, at the moment, the archives event is going on, and this is looking likely to tie into this. This is the personal log of Dr. Liao, who has been teased to be a potential character, but it's not looking like she is going to be the person based around this. After all these years, it feels good to finally get to focus on the research that I am truly passionate about. The Athena prototype has been deemed a success, so much so that Jax finally agreed to authorize my new project, imitate Jack pending further evaluation. I don't know why I did that. And the timing couldn't be better. People are as scared of Omnics as ever, even at a time they seem more human than ever. That's a lot of evers. Those Omnic monks in Nepal stating that they believe that they possess souls, just as we do. And just the other day, I read a story about manufacturing Omnics in London, walking off the line claiming they heard the music and wanted to search the meaning of life. Why can't we see that artificial life is still fundamentally life? Instead, we're going in the opposite direction. Violence against Omnics is on the rise and even more governments are cracking down on their rights and freedoms. I can only hope that this project can change the conversation, that people can understand that the potential of artificial life is so much greater than whatever we have to gain by treating them as our property or our servants. There is still so much to do, but I have to try and show the world a better way before it's too late. Echo is the first name that comes to my head when it comes to this, but I also do want to talk about a Athena. Athena was mentioned here by Liao, it's something that she's worked on, but I also do want to remind you that in Overwatch 2, Athena isn't the voiceover of the game, it's in fact somebody new entirely. So there is a potential that they could go down the vision route from Age of Ultron, where they make Athena into a bot, and that bot actually turns out to be Echo, even though the voice is a little bit different. It's a project, it's an Omnic project that Liao has been working on, so it's quite likely to be an Omnic Overwatch based, and again, likely to be Echo slash Athena slash both in some weird way that she was created. I'm sure we're going to find out more as the week goes on. Like I said, this is a accessing file very similar to how teasers have been done for the Archives event in the past. So maybe this new hero edition actually leads into the Archives event some way. Maybe there's another smaller mission to introduce her as a character, some other bits and pieces that the event may have, even including Echo into some of the missions just because she was present at that time. Who knows? That's just me speculating. But I do want to talk about why it's likely that this character, this hero, is going to be coming specifically on Thursday, the 19th of March has been mentioned by various people. Specifically, AlphaCast has been one that has a interview with a character designer on that day, around that time, and even another French streamer, Althea, saying that he heard from AlphaCast that the new hero was coming around that time. AlphaCast obviously denied this, but you even have the France saying that he's going to start streaming Overwatch on around March the 19th, 20th as well. So a lot of people that are now playing different games at the moment suddenly come in back to Overwatch around the same time. Althea also said that this new hero is looking to be a support, but again, that might not necessarily be true. It's a bit of speculation at the end of the day. But there's multiple sources saying that the 19th is going to be the time that we find out more information. And I'm honestly really excited to see more. Like we'll talk about at the end of this video, there's been very little content, I suppose, on the game. So a new hero right now would be really cool, and I'm really excited to see what they may do to the game. But because we've had so many news and bits of information happening over the week, I wanted to go over some of the other talking points on stuff that you may have missed to really finish this video out to make sure that it's jam-packed with news just so you get everything in one place. The one thing we could expect this week could be a new hero but it could also be an Overwatch 2 beta and I'm basing this off the fact that we saw two of these screenshots which personally I'm not all too sure if they are legitimate or not. These are two screenshots showing Moira and Brigitte's talents for the PvE mode showing off multiple ability changes like we highlighted when we went to BlizzCon. We'll go over Moira's first, her choice for level 1 talents are Soul Eater which her right click note affects up to 5 targets at once. 
The use of Evanescence also creates a healing area for healing smoke. You then have level 10 talents, multi-orbs. When launching an orb, it will multiply by twice the number of enemies it connects. I'm sure Samito's having a ball of a time with that. Toxic Prison, lock an enemy with an orb and send them away while absorbing their vitality. And the level 20 talents, Biological Panic, create an ascended smoke bomb that heals and damages. And Unexpected Help, heal your enemies and bring them back from the dead to fight alongside you, effectively turning them into zombies. Gun over to Brigitte, she has gold to fight, provide a shield to each member of your team regardless of distance. You have Getaway, which increases the flail distance 5 times. Mitzi, a curious friend in a jetpack, arrives in battle to help you and your team. Create an area that prevents your team from dying whilst healing. It's really hard to read clear in a place. And in Godfather's Legacy, you have Reinhardt's shield instead of the smaller Brigitte one. Now we're not sure if this is real or not. The first telling sign I suppose is that we don't have updated graphics on Brigitte and Moira. All of the other characters that were shown in Overwatch 2 looked a bit different, it didn't have to be much, but maybe it is because it's an internal test that they're not ready to show off how the new versions of Brigitte and Moira may look. But I find it interesting that all of this stuff about something hitting this week is revealed, and then we get these pictures randomly put on Twitter and Facebook a couple of days afterwards, so it could line up, it's hard to say, but do take it with a pinch of salt. And like I mentioned, with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, it's fair to say that stuff can change and will change. Speaking of which, the Overwatch League has had its own fair share of problems with that, having homestands around the world, pretty much all of them being cancelled until sometime in like May, June, July, where it might start to pick up again. But these games are going to be played online now. Of course, a lot of Chinese teams missed out on the opportunity to play because all of those homestands were shut down in January, February time, but now we're going to be able to to see some of these teams like Soul Dynasty play as early as next week. Starting on Saturday, there will be games all online, all land based. It's actually really impressive how the Overwatch League have managed to turn this around so quickly to make sure that the games are played correctly. Not to mention that they are changing the way that they do random hero bans. It's gone on probability right now. What that effectively means is that hero pools will now be weighted based on their pick rate, which I think is a really nice change. For example, if there's say Diva, who is well more than a 70% pick rate, they will have four tickets put into the random machine that picks up the hero bans. But heroes that are played less will have less tickets therefore less chance to be picked, meaning that heroes like Soldier and Sombra who weren't played a lot that were banned this week are less likely to be banned than heroes like Mei, D.Va, Lucio, Reinhardt who tend to get picked a lot more, which I think for the Overwatch League is a much better thing. The final bit of news that I wanted to go over in this video concerns us actually. Like I said, we put out a community post talking about it. I don't want to read it out necessarily in this video. I'm going to link it in the comments below if you haven't seen it already. But generally, we're trying to dedicate to making videos that we love making and trying to avoid uploading videos just for the sake of uploading. Of course, times like this where new heroes revealed, or hinted at least, it's a great reason to make a video because there's news and stuff. But it has been a really quiet time for Overwatch at the moment and we don't necessarily want to feel forced to make Overwatch videos when there's quiet periods, certainly going into Overwatch 2's launch as well. Not to mention that we've been making a lot of Valorant content and naturally going into the beta and launch of that game we're going to be focusing a lot on that game and in some cases focusing on that a lot more than Overwatch when news may hit. Some of you guys are really supportive of the fact that we're doing other stuff and even just said I'm not interested in Valorant but I will still watch your Overwatch videos I'm not going to unsubscribe which I super appreciate the honesty and the way that you go about that. I'm the same with watching other YouTubers I fully understand where you're coming from but if you are a person that only wants us to cover Overwatch in the future and you only want Overwatch news then unfortunately this channel won't fit that criteria anymore and I fully understand if you want to unsubscribe and will unsubscribe as a result of that. Like I said I watch a lot of YouTube, people move on from different games that's life. So I fully understand that. But in short, we aren't Overwatch Central anymore, but that doesn't mean that we're jumping onto the Valorant bandwagon, changing that name to Valorant Central and going down that route. We want a nice balance between the two games and other future games too, that when there's lots of Overwatch news, like a new hero like we're having at the moment, we're of course going to be focusing more on that. But when the beta hits for Valorant and the launch of that game hits, we'll be focusing on that and the new games, yada yada, you get the point. It's all about balance. But like I said, if you just want to watch videos and nothing else, this channel won't be for you anymore. And if you want to unsubscribe, I fully 100% get it. But regardless of if you were an old viewer that stopped watching and will unsubscribe now, for those that will just watch Overwatch stuff 
or you're new from Valorant, I appreciate all the support, new and old. You've given us a dream job, to be honest. And if you do have any questions on how we intend to do stuff in the future, leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. It's not like I'm going anywhere tonight, you know what I mean? But thank you so much, guys. You are all amazing. But seeing as we said thank you to a lot of you guys, a big thanks again to HyperX. We've been working with them for the majority of our lifespan. This is mine and Miska's full-time job, and it's fair to say that we couldn't do it without these guys. They also just make some amazing stuff. I've been shouting out the Cloud Mix headset for quite a while. I found myself using it a lot more. Whilst I'm not traveling the world at the moment or even really going outside for various reasons, as you can imagine, the Cloud Mix headset still gets used for my PC, for my phone if I want to listen to music. I can plug it into the PlayStation. I can plug it into the switch, Bluetooth, wired, whatever you want to use it for, you can do. It's multi-purpose and the quality in the headphones themselves are pretty spectacular as well as you can imagine. If you do want to check them out, go check them out in the description below. Thanks so much for the support guys. I honestly love you all to pieces and I'm really excited for the future, both for Overwatch, for Valorant and everything else. Times like this, it's important to remain hopeful, I suppose. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time.